Okay. So I know it's a little hard to see, but my little design is traced on. I didn't trace on the writing. I will freehand that, but you could certainly trace it. I would paint the background first and then put your writing on, your tracing even. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do all around these guys, all the blue. The grasses and the little flowers will come right up beside them. It was just blue with a little white stroke stroked in to sort of vaguely maybe look like clouds in the background. So I'm going to start. I, I like my hog bristle brushes. I'm always going on about them, but I don't have them here. So I'm just using a synthetic flat. Or you can even use, um, you know, any kind of a flat brush to fill in that space. Um, yeah, I love those green brushes. I know, me too. Yeah, I'm going to order some more of them. I see a lot of shadow here on the on the um, painting, but I'm going to do the best we can tonight being recording in this new place. And from this, I will be able to adjust and see what we need to do about lighting and um, whatnot. It, it doesn't look super high quality video to me either. I don't know why that is. Um, I will dig into that. Hopefully it'll be okay once we get some color on here. How does it look on your end? Does it look kind of pixelated or is it clear? Uh, you can see the shadow every once in a while, but you know, it's, okay. I'm sure I'm gonna the painting will look that. fine. I, you can use any blue you want. I threw out some cerulean blue. I just want to see how it looks. Um, I kind of like that. Any blue, I, I use my phthalo blue usually with a little white for your sky. If, there's a, if you want to go more, you can even go more to like a, a tealy blue. Sometimes I use like a tealy blue for my sky. It's pretty much what you like the look of. This little brush is done all like the work blue. today. I was using it for chalk painting a bar and, and now we're painting tonight with it. So it's pretty good. I'm taking white, uh, my blue, and sometimes I just take a little bit of white. But for now, let's just cover the back of that background. Can you see I'm using those big flat crisscrossy strokes? I'm going to just grab a little white sometimes and put that in there where I want a light area. And I will probably go with a smaller brush and trace around my pattern so that I don't have to, uh, you know, I don't bump into the, to the lines. I might do that now. I'm going to take a little blue. I'm going to add white because I don't want it as dark as that really in any part of the sky. Painting Cheryl, do you, Cheryl, do you ever just paint the whole thing blue and then come back? I know you don't do it when yes. you're doing a tutorial, a quick I one. I do. And okay. sometimes I do that because I really want whatever I have going on it to have like kind of a dark base to begin with. Okay. Um, but sometimes it's hard for me. I want to, some people really want that pattern just so, and so I give it to you that way, but something like sometimes like the golden hour that we're doing next, I have two tracers. One is just very basic with what you just need traced on. And the other one is more detail, which I would paint on, but a lot of people want the tracer. So it's there. The only thing I traced on later on was the little rod iron railing which you'll see in the video. So it's however, whatever method works for you. When I'm outside painting and I'm painting landscapes, I paint my whole canvas red. I love painting on a red canvas okay. for my landscapes or florals sometimes. So I like to sometimes paint the whole canvas and then paint on top of that because you don't have that white bits peeking out at you and you're not worried constantly of filling them in. I like that way that red I love the red under my skies. I love the red under the greens of the landscapes. I've tried orange and yellow and other colors. I really like the red. Uh, I have not tried red. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I just love it. I have a whole bunch of prepped canvases that are just red. And if I'm out plein air painting, that's what I paint on. It seems to, seems to be a little easier. It's not like, okay, I have to sketch on and I have to paint every little bit. I can be more loose with my brush strokes and and not worry about everything being filled in, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yes, it I does. Red. And you know what, too, is sometimes I paint too much, and I go back and I throw little bits of red in as if it's peeking through, because I like that look. I really like it. So, Kim, I'm you're finding your way around ones. the Mighty Network site. Okay, I have am. I've been busy, because uh, the spring is coming, and I do window murals do for you? different oh. businesses. So I did my first one for the spring so that was an all-day affair <laughs> oh my goodness you'll have to share pictures i've only done my i own will 
I've done my own store. We had a window decorating contest in town once, and I did. I had an Irish import store, which I just closed. Um, and at winter, I did like a whole Irish country scene, added snow, put snowmen. So much fun, but a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Well, and I'm more whimsical. So there are some other artists out there that do a little more like for Christmas, more winter wonderland. And I can't just do an all white scene. That's not me. Yeah. I, that's me too. I get <laughs> I have it. to have I color. <laughs> yeah. So you, you would really like having that red base on some of your paintings. Okay. I'm I'm gonna try. To, um, if I remember, and if I don't just remind me, send, say, send a message, I'll put a post up. I'll share some of the particular paintings that you can see. I just hung some here that have the red that you can kind of see that it was started on red okay that's cool yeah. yeah I've done some of your I think they're Irish cottages is that oh, the ones really? that you did yeah and the patchwork um field that one is pretty whimsical with the little color yeah. yeah that's fine yeah I try to mix it up I try to make you know I, I give four three paintings a month and then we do a tutorial but and it's not so that people will, I, I feel like I overwhelm people sometimes, but it's more to pick what you like. You might be an animal painter. You might want to do landscapes. I don't do it so that everybody has to paint everything. I do it so that there's a variety to, to for what you like. So um, I try to tell people it's not like Netflix where you, you have to binge all the episodes, just paint, find what you like and Go from I was trying to do uh, all of them, but you I just, probably I have done them all, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> do I? Charlotte's quite a, a she. She does so many cool things, and those those little um cards you were doing recently, and then those little sneakers that you did. Oh my goodness, so many. Cool Are you things. the one that posted the paintbrushes? Is that the one I just saw? That was a different lady. I think oh, that was Gail. Gail. Was it Gail that did post the Gail? Yeah. I think it, she did phenomenal on those. <laughs> that was that was such a last minute whim on my part I'm like what am I going to paint I want to throw a different painting in and I've been wanting to do that for a while just so that you know if you're a painter you could use it in your signage or in your put in your office or, yeah yep yeah I, I love painting my art supplies I'm gonna try that one we'll see <laughs> Pam, what paint I, do you use when you're doing your windows uh acrylic Okay. I, and I paint on the outside and yep. uh, they show through problem. pretty good. You base it with a primer, all white, you know, base coat it all in and yeah, then come back. Window washer when he had to come and take it off, you know, he wasn't. Well, they scrape happy. it. You just use a, he did, yeah. he did a single it. edge. Yeah, we do. And I, I'm that's it. I don't, do it. I tell them straight up when I give them my price, I don't do windows. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. that's, <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's another uh art really to and make them not streaky the painting. yep no. so so you can see this actually brush works nicely for these big broad strokes i do this sort of a background a lot of times because the acrylic is so transparent if you uh, don't want to do a lot of coats you could get away with seeing the canvas through lightly on this sort of a background i'm not worried it's just background stuff but I do love this sort of background when you don't really want to take away from, you know, your, your subject. Interest. You want it to be just a little subtle in the back. Got it. Yeah. And you could go straight dark blue, but just get some white in there before it dries. Or I just mix it on the palette. I like it when it's dark, light, just all different shades. Interesting to look at, but not going to take over your painting cool yeah i'm gonna like i don't like the way this is looking grainy on my end of the video but um know that i will take care of i'll watch it after and if it, this settings that can be changed but with a different internet here i have to make sure it's the fastest and if this is a choice i could change it or get a booster or something kim where do you live i forget do i'm I in romeo michigan just north of detroit oh. It's so funny, Cam, here. I haven't met a lot of people. It's like a little community of manufactured homes kind of deal. And uh, every, a guy stopped by today on his little golf cart, and he's from Michigan. My neighbors right there are from Michigan. I haven't met a lot of people. Um, my brother lives here, so I know him, of course. But I, And the people we bought from were going back to Michigan. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. It's rainy today. 
was the cold. Out That's what I like about Florida. Is it's warm most of the time. So yeah, I'll I let y'all have the really it. cold I don't mind states. The heat at all. I love yeah. it. I like the four seasons still. So I agree. And yeah. I love the first snow and then I got tired of it after that. So I will have Maine from May to October. So I'm going to have the little spring. I'll have a little fall and then skip the bit, skip the middle. The long That's going to be nice. Yep. Yeah. I can't wait. I was coming down to Florida like once a month. Anyway, my sister, my son's here. My sister's here. My brother, my other brother just bought here. My other brother's got a year and a half before he retires and then he'll be heading down. But would I pick Florida? First choice, probably not. But I um, I love it here and, and the family will be here. So that's really why I would rather be here. So I'm going to leave that as it is. You could certainly go and make more little white areas and more clouds if you'd like. But that's enough for me. And we're going to bring so many little grass. It looks bare, but so many little grasses up there behind them and in front of them that it's going to fill it up. And if you trace yours on this way, which is the way I had the tracer, even better, you could just bring those grasses way up high if you want. And I'm gonna just let that dry while I do my bunnies, base coat them anyway. I'm gonna do all the greenery afterwards. And generally I do go back to front, but since so much of the greenery is going in front of these little bunnies, we may as well do it all at the same time. And last, we will do the writing. So I did two different bunnies and the white bunny is just base coated kind of a blue gray. And I start dark and I just get lighter as I do the strokes. And then this guy's gonna start with the dark brown and go lighter. So I'm gonna start with this one here. And I don't have my Payne's gray with me. So if you have Payne's gray, that kind of works, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of my phthalo blue and black and it will be fine. Where's my blue? I don't have any palette paper or anything here. So I'm using Thanksgiving paper plates. Paper plates work for me. <laughs> I like those little foam palettes too, like if I'm doing a class, but I what just like adding foam? palette paper. And I also just use, when I'm using my golden acrylics, my fluids, I just use a plastic palette and then I peel the paint off. It's kind of therapeutic, you know, peeling the whole uh -huh. thing off there. I'll use a meat tray if I'm real desperate. Yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, or I one with vegetables that came on, not, not, not so much a meat with the blood. You can buy but, those yeah. big packages of 60 at Dollar, the Dollar Tree and Dollar, Dollar Tree. Okay. Um, I haven't I seen them. Those, especially for a class, it kind of keeps all the paint from like getting all over the place. Yeah. If I'm here, I'll have a pad, but at class, I don't want them to worry about the paint coming out. And oh, look, we have Mary. So we have some new people in tonight. Yay. And I'm going to mix that color up here. And I'm just going to take a little blue to my, and I'm going to need some white too, because I don't want it to be this dark. So it's going to be just a gray blue, a slate blue. I just don't like using gray. It's too dull for me and add blue to all the black whenever I'm doing black. If I'm doing black pets or animals, I highlight them with a light blue, not just white. It, does, it helps them from looking gray and old to being just kind of a, a nice highlight. I like the Payne's gray. I it's got too, some blue in it. For you. Yeah. Welcome, Mary. Thanks for popping in. Well, hi. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. Charlotte is here. Charlotte's been with me a long, long time. Um, Cam is rather new, too. And so I'm so glad we have some new faces tonight. I have only just done the background. I know I gave you the tracer for it this way, and I didn't realize that. I'm in the process of moving those title and the ladies. I'm recording from the first time from my new location. So um, excuse the kind of crazy lighting. And, and to me, the video looks a little, I don't know, off. So I will fix that all up as we go, but we'll be fine for tonight. Um, and all we've done so far is just the background. And of course, the recording started, so you can always back it up. But all I did simply was take some uh, cerulean blue or any blue you want and some white and I just took my big brush and I just did little crisscrossy strokes just to get a bit of a textured background without being too busy so that's where we are now and now we're going to just go into our little bunnies and the one on the right is going to be a white bunny but we can't just paint him white we would have no 
shadows or highlights, no depth. And, and so what I do is I set dark usually and work light. So in this case, it's a little black and blue and some white, a little bit like a Payne's gray if you have that. Actually, I'm gonna go to, and it's looking a little gray to me. I'm gonna turn my ultra blue deep. Oh, look at Gail here too now. Yay, we'll have a, we have a whole party. So I'm just gonna base coat that little bunny in that blue gray. And then we will get lighter and lighter as we stroke on that fur. Hi, Gail. Hey. Hey, Gail. How are y'all? We're oh. good tonight. We are good. I'm in my new place in Florida, so I you know the lighting's a little wonky in the camera, but uh, it's hard when you mix, don't mix, don't, if you can help it, don't use a Thanksgiving Day plate because the colors look all off on to me with this crazy background. So I have just mixed some blue and black. It's going to look a little like my sky color, but once we get that white on top, we'll be fine. I'm just going to go under where I'm going to paint white. Now, as I'm going like this, you've got one ear on top of the other and you know, it might be hard to follow the pattern. So what I do in a case like that, I will either throw in a little dark or light just to remind me that this is where the separation is. And that front ear is forward, so it would be lighter. And you can even, because both colors are wet, just sort of soften that together. When I do a wet and wet blend like that, two wet colors, I dry my brush off and I just use that dry brush to soften. And now we know where that light ear is forward. We can shade this one with some dark later, but we at least know which ear is which. I'm gonna go a little lighter. I've got that pretty dark blue. I'm gonna go a little lighter. And then I'm gonna get the little face. I'll draw, I'll just go around the eye for now. We'll paint the eye in after. I know I'm not letting y'all see me because I ain't got my teeth in. <laughs> Don't worry, Gail, we're here for you. This is, you know, we know we're very casual around here. Rachel came up and Jama she cooked Camp steaks too. tonight. And we had steaks and sweet potatoes. And darn if I didn't take the first bite and my teeth just came loose. Oh, <laughs> I, said, I said, that's not a good way to enjoy your darn food. <laughs> so I had to cut everything up tiny, tiny. Oh my goodness, because you don't want to not have your nice meal. So I'm just base coating this on and the paint's not drying real quick, which is kind of nice. So what you can do even, you can just base coat it flat if you want, but if, while you're going along, since you have this wet paint, it's, it's a great time to sort of give a little highlight or shading. So right now I know, you know, he's gonna be a little lighter up here. You can just put that in now and look at it, it almost just blends itself because it's just wet and wet. It's a great time. To Were you that. on uh, Craft Around the Clock today? I was on this morning at 9.15. Um, well, I looked. I, I came home from Mahjong and looked, and I couldn't find you. Really? What did you paint? I just went in, it's, it's on my page still there. I just went into, to, I had trouble. Um, I usually go in through Facebook Business Suite. It's fine. It goes live. I'm good. Today, it would not. So I had to back out, go into just right on my Facebook page and do it. And didn't allow me the time to really put my description or anything in. But Gail, it's there. And I always go ahead and put it on faith on YouTube as well. And then I share the link in our group here. Okay. So for you ladies. What did you what did you paint? I just painted some little um ceramic, ceramic bunnies. Bunny. Oh, okay. And they I found them at Target and they're like a little, they can sit in a pot. And I did one as like a little chocolate bunny. I'm going to finish oh, okay. them tomorrow and I'll post pictures and I'll put uh, that video in, in for you. Um, yeah, I won't, do, I won't do those. If I can't do it on canvas, then I won't do oh, it. Oh, yes. So it was just kind of, I, I found them and they were appropriate for Easter this week. But for Cam and and Mary, I do um, a, a, a weekly live segment usually on a Facebook page called Craft Around the Clock. It's all day during the week, Monday through Friday, from like 7.30 a.m. to like 10.30 or 11 at night. And every 45 minutes is another crafter comes on. Very crafty things. Um, a lot of uh, all sorts of things that reach yeah. and decoupage and you name it, repurposing things. But kind of fun to, to watch. I do painting on them. There's not a lot of us on there painting, but 
if you are interested in crafts or sometimes I just put it on to listen to in the background to see what people are up to. So I saw you crafts. today. Did you? Oh yeah, 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 you did. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I was on. Then I went to Target and I got some bunnies. No, oh, I didn't know if they'd still have them. them. I thought they wouldn't I have know, them. Because I went today and didn't see them. And when I just saw your post there, I'm like, oh no, I hope they have them. So good. Oh. Can you see how I'm not even up to shading this guy yet with the fur, but I'm already getting some dimension. So yeah. I'm just going to take a little darker shade. And under the chin, it will be the darkest here. I'm going to do it now because the paint is is allowing it. So look, I just put that dark here. We'll put little we'll put little strokes of fur after. But if I just dry my brush off, I can blend that in enough. And then we'll put the fur on. I have a little bit of dark. Um, I have a little bit of like the back legs showing here, not much, but just soften that in. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend right now. You can see it's already getting form. You could look just at the photo and see where these darks are. I had a little dark here, it looked like. The ears casting a little shadow. Here's casting a little shadow. This is even dry, but it's allowing me just to brush it in there. I and Cheryl, weren't you part of the Flamingo Jingle? Yes, was that yes. last summer? That was that's last where summer. I first found you. Oh, that's cool. where I found you. Yeah. Oh, I didn't great. finish all those paintings either, but. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's There's, just like it's not a race. It's kind of just you know, your own pace. Once uh, Christmas comes around again, you could go back and yep, and take a look. So it cute. is interesting for me to know like where people came from. I, I'm glad you shared that. You can see how the paint's dry now, so it's not blending as much, but that's okay. Just going to give me an indication. And as you guys will know, uh, some of you guys know, but I give my objects form by giving some highlights and shadows. It's pretty much the way I work. Dark to light, shadows, highlights, and I have a couple ways to do them. Because acrylic paint dries so quick, I can't use the method I use when I oil paint because I can just fuss with things forever. So I try to either work wet and wet so I can blend, or I'll do a, a wash after. So we do practice those, and I do show you those little methods. Um, and that's usually in acrylic how I get the shading and the highlighting. So this say is dry, so I couldn't really do the wet and wet, but I can if I just go back now and with the color that I started with and put it up against it, dry off the brush, and I can now still work it in. So you can even do it if the paint has dried a bit. And when we have a lot of fur going on top of the bunny, I'm not worrying about the perfect blend like I might if this was the finished look, but that just gives me a little shading on where the darks are. The lights we can bring in when we do the fur. So I'm going to leave that little guy that way. So again, I start dark. So I'm going to pick, get a darker brown here, maybe like a burnt umber. And I'm going to get out my light brown too, because I can work with the both colors. It seemed to work pretty well there. So I've got a light and a dark. I even, I think I might have put a little burnt sienna in there. So I get a burnt umber. This is kind of a honey brown. This is a burnt sienna. You could almost get this color by a little bit of each and some white. You want to play around with the paint. And I'm going to go around the middle of the ear because that will be pink. Get into that dark color. I'm going to start middle shade, I think, because I want a real dark in the shadow area. And even my burnt umber is never dark enough. It's never dark enough. I'm going to add a little black to the for those really dark areas. Well, I might go in a little bit of that honey brown to start and mix some of the dark in. So I'm going to just follow the shape. And that is the name of that honey brown there. Are you using your phone mic? My what? The, te the microphone on your telephone. I, your little, uh, I don't hear you quite as well oh, as usual. So. You know what? We had this last time and because I did take the audio off my phone and put it on my computer, let me switch it and we'll see if it works better. Because I think we had this problem last time and I forgot. So hang on. I'm going to mute. Let's see. I'm hard of hearing anyway. Everybody else making here fine. <laughs> I just make up what I think she's saying. Oh, come wow. on. Good one. <laughs> no, I'll go ahead and gripe about it <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Now, I enjoy I enjoy hearing her explain stuff. So, uh, yeah, I do too. And it was hard to hear a little bit. I think she's really good at, at, at teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah, I do too. I hear an echo. Okay. Okay. Can you um, hear me? Echo. Okay. It's on both places. That's why. Okay. All right. Is it echo now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. On, yeah. on my end too. How about now? Still yes. echoing? Yeah. You can you can go back to the way it was. I mean, I won't remember what that is. Now. I well, I hear you better. No, I don't hear you at all. Because <laughs> she ain't talking. Oh, her lips are moving. She muted herself. Oh. All right. All right. Oh, I know what's I know what's happening. I have to turn the volume off. How about that? Yes. Good. Okay. I had the volume up on my computer. That's why it was muted, but the volume was up. So, and I do have a new microphone. I keep meaning to try. So I'll try that as well. But if you can hear me a little better now, that's good. It's echoing yeah. on my end, but I think it's just on mine. I know I could probably, let's see. Okay. All right, so okay. I'm just gonna fill in with this middle shade of brown here. And if you do section at a time, then your paint does stay wet and you can sort of get some shading in there. I'll take a little of that burnt umber. Just gonna be shaded there. Oh, can you guys, is the camera frozen? It was, yep. Mm -hmm. I don't see it's, your hand moving at all. Yeah, it's nice. frozen again, hang on. It, I think it might just be the internet here. Um, and I'm sorry about that, let's see. Cheryl, did you say you were in your new house? I am, oh. and so it's, a little bit new with the lighting and the internet and all that stuff. I'm gonna go out of this camera and back in again so that you will lose the screen for a minute. Do it again. I messed you up whenever I asked you to try to yeah, do that. Charlie, you're always a problem, I swear. I know, it. problem child. Yeah, you're still frozen. Yep. Ah, there you are. Okay. I don't know why it's just so slow on this end. Can you guys still hear me? Can you hear me, Charlotte, still? Mm -hmm. Let me turn it back up and turn mine back up all the way. Did you turn your camera back on? Cam, is your video on? Nope, I have, oh, there it is. Do you see it now? I don't, I don't see you. I just see the uh, icon. Can you hear me now, there, guys? Oh, yeah. I'm not showing my face. I'll show you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you better, I Cheryl. got out of the tub. My back hurts so much from painting today. I had to go soak. 
And then I remembered I had this. So it's like, oh, well, we won't show you today. <laughs> Girl, I'm in my pajamas, oh. uh, not my pajamas, but my robe. Yep. Half time I'm in my pajamas. Well, I'll get brave next time. <laughs> Can you hear me now, guys? Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know what happened. I, there was a weird glitch there with the internet, but let's. It's just yeah. all new, new situation. I know. I know. And I thought by doing the crap around the clock thing this morning, I would work the bugs out, but the Zoom is a whole different animal. So, anyway, so my colors have now dried that I wanted to blend for you. Oh, let me make it bigger for you, too. Hang on. There you go. There we go. Thank you. So yep. I'm just going to re-wet that collar a little bit. And it doesn't matter because I almost could use a second coat. Re-wet this little ear. <clears throat> and then drying off my brush. I'm not washing it. I'm just going to go into the darker brown, work in while that's wet, put it in there. And now I want a dry brush to sort of just blend it. I'll just, oh, you know what? You can't really see my paper towel, but I just wipe it off on my paper towel. And then I just use that dry brush to, to soften. And something like this, I would just take that dark shadow and almost just bring it up. And that just gives you a little shadow because the front of the head is in front and it would cast a little shadow there. And same we'll do here. Oh, you know what? This guy has pink in the middle, so I'll paint it over, but uh, I forgot to trace a little bit. So same with the body. Let's do section at a time so that we can get some wet paint when we need it. Oh, Nancy's here. Nancy is my friend from Clinton, who's a painter and in the group. Let's see. I'm just gonna simply fill it in. I'll go around a little bit with the noses so we know where it is, but we could paint that little mouth in. You don't have to really go around that. And I do bring the little hairs up a little bit like at the top of the head, just cause it's kind of cute. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Cheryl. I'm so glad you popped in. Yeah, that was the first time I figured out how to do it. <laughs> oh, geez, no. well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We are, um, I'm down in Florida now, so I, it's kind of a little tricky tonight. We've had some little glitches because it's a different internet provider. And uh -huh. well, I just got home another. from Florida today. <laughs> oh, the, oh, I just painted over my nose. Oh, really? That's right. Where where did you end up? Where were you? I was in Tam well, Palmetto outside of Tampa. Oh, okay. Because I'm in Lakeland and I'm not too far from Tampa. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so I just filled in my face with that honey brown. And Nancy, it's um, recorded, so you can catch up from the beginning, too, afterwards. Oh, okay. And while it's still wet, as when I'm going to dry my brush off, take my dark, and I'm using the picture as a reference to where the darks are. I gave him from the little nose up, and, and if you don't paint over it like I did, you'll know where that is. It's a little darker there. But you wouldn't want to leave that as a harsh line, so I'm drying the brush off and just softening it with the with the dry brush. And when I see I'm picking up too much of that dark on my brush, I just dry it. So that's a little dark there. I have a little dark under the little where the mouth is. And to be honest, I can see that little line through my paint even. So I'm just going to make that little area. And I'm going to bring it up just so it's like a little cheek area there. I'm just lightly laying on that color and I'm going to just dry my brush off and then just soften. Those are cute. And, and that's all I need because again, we're having all that fur come on it later on. And that's about all I have for the darks. We'll brush some darks in as we're doing the fur. Makes that with the snowball first try. What's that? Oh, oh, that was my grandson talking. Oh, oh Nance, okay. Yeah, you got the little ones. <laughs> they could paint along. They've come to paint class. Uh, they're supposed to be doing um, eating supper and taking showers. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like there in Clinton? Is it kind of gray? Um, when I got home this morning, it was maybe like 40-ish, 50, but windy. Yeah. It was tough leaving 85 and 90. Yes, it's going to be for me too. <laughs> I want my nice shadow under the head. So I'm just going to paint that right in. But again, I, I usually even have a paper towel in my hand to dry my brush off. 
And Why is it so opening so where one color meets the other? I do. Do you want a paper plate? Sometimes it almost pretty much blends by itself. Oh, you want Huh? Hidden behind the grasses is a little bit of a shadow. I think it almost isn't even shown. It might just be a little bit where the legs might be, but it, it's hardly anything. I don't even think you're really going to see it. I'm just going to have the, the legs in there. So that's the base coat, what all I have to start with. And now we just start with the fur right over here, a little bit of brown here, but we're going to do one at a time. So let's go do that white bunny. And I don't even think I brought my liner brush, but you could use a liner brush. I'm just going to use what I have for, you know, a pointed brush of some sort. I have a tiny little liner too. I start with the strokes of hair a little darker. Maybe I'll go a little bit uh, of the blue gray to that white. So it's not, I want the bright, bright white for the very last little strokes. Um, and I, and I go in a little watery too, so that I get a nice long stroke. Now you could do your bunnies almost like they're not as furry as sometimes I put those long strokes and I get a little detail um, more so on that first bunny that we did I really had a lot of little hairs on them it's what your style is you don't have to do that just like I do you could just do broader strokes and get just you know not all the little fine lines so you would start either way this way and then it's how much you know how many how much patience or how many little little tiny strokes you want so I'm adding water to my paint and I don't want to use straight white yet. So I'm going back into a little of that blue gray. I want it to show up a little bit here, but subtly, not like a big jump. And I really don't know if it's going to show up till I put it on. So I'll start in the, if it's the same color as this, I'll keep adding white. With the fur on the animals, remember how we have to work in a certain direction starting at the end working down so that the hair falls in the right way if we started here and worked our fur up you'd be cutting off all the nice little strokes so that's why you could turn your bunny right upside down if you wanted to but i start and i can even bring that camera down closer i start at that end with little strokes and i'm going to let me turn the camera down just, on a tiny bit, just so you're right on top of those details for now. And it doesn't show up a lot. It's very gray, but I don't mind. I want it to be subtle. And if I find it's not showing up at all, I just dip into white as I go. Keeping my paint thin, because when for these little strokes, you need to thin your paint down. And it's okay if it's kind of watery. All the better when you go with those last few strokes, bright white, heavy paint to really show. So right now, I am just working down. And when I was saying about the thin versus thicker strokes, you could certainly go and have heavy strokes. It would come out just as cute. You could have nice, heavy strokes. And you could have super little thin ones. And in this beer, ear in the back, it's the same thing. I'm starting at the edge, and I'm going to work. You can kind of curve them to fit the shape. So I'm a little straight in here in the middle of the ear, and then at the end, I'm sort of curve them out. I'm just going to mute you, Nance, and you can turn that on whenever you want to talk. Um, it just gets a little loud. So can you, does this make sense what I'm doing starting at the end and going out? I'm not going real close yes. to that because I want to keep that shadow there, so that's enough. I will have little hairs coming over the ear, but we'll have to get that pink in there, which I could have done that now, but let's just do this first coat of these hairs and we'll get that pink in there. For the face, the, the fur is gonna fall from the back forward. And sometimes it varies a little, depending on the planes of what we're painting, but I just start there and work back. You can still see my shadow. Paint's kind of thin. I'm not gonna go real heavy yet. And now I just look at my image and I see that this is the direction that I'm going to do right down the nose. And again, they could be heavier, lighter strokes, whatever you want. Down here, it's sort of the hair, the little fur falls this way. Looks like you've got a mustache now, but it'll, it'll work. And this little area, Kind of comes out this way and I'm going to work in. Usually I would be turning my painting every which way to get the best angle when I'm painting, 
So it doesn't have to stay flat. It doesn't have to stay on the easel. I'm keeping it this way best I can so that you can see what I'm doing a little easier. And going forward, I'm just gonna get brighter and brighter, maybe even a little heavier with my strokes so that it's going from darks to lights. And same on the body. The body kind of starts down here. We're going to just work up. A lot of this is going to really be covered, remember. So don't, don't kill yourself with all these little strokes because be honest, we're only going to really see this part here. I want some strokes in there, but I'm going to just kind of do them kind of quick because we're not going to see much here. So the little there, you start at the bottom of the cup. Here, I'm going to really just do kind of vague because, again, we're not going to see it really. I'm just putting in, oh, and you can't see it. Sorry. Yeah. Here we are. Holler at me if, the, if, it, if, the, if the, I'm not giving you the best view. You'll see the back here a little more in the front, so I'll get a little more detail. But down here, I'm not worrying too much about it. I want to get a little more gray. I don't want to get it too bright yet. Green blue in there. I never did do the real bunny last year. You remember my bunny had glasses. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, that's cute though. That's what it's, that's what's making it your own, really. My granddaughter, uh, no, Willow, appropriated that for her room. Did she? Oh, <laughs> it was just her birthday. How old is she? She just turned five. Five. Okay. I'm going on twenty-one. Well, it seems to be the norm with the little ones these days. <laughs> She's a mess now. You can tell she's been raised around a bunch of grown people. Uh, she's very articulate. and uh, She doesn't mind explaining things the long way. <laughs> <laughs> and again, not going too far up into the shadow, just a little bit. It, and, and like I always say, when I look at the camera, I see things that need to be addressed more than I see it here because I'm not far enough back from it. And, and you always want to step back. But I can see here, it just it needs a little bit of feathering. It just was a big harsh, even though it's a shadow, I still need a feather there. I'm going to pop in the pink on the inside of the ears, though, because that way we can bring the, the shading and the, and the fur right up. I'm just you could mix your Tuscan red and some white. Oh, I have a pink right here. I'm gonna lighten it. It's a bit dark. And I need a little more white. So I'm going to put that in now. Um, I could even put the little noses in too. They are pink as well. This guy, it's the back of the ear here, but this one was we do see the pink on this side. And again, while it's wet is a good time to just take some of the dark, maybe, go around the edge. Sometimes I usually make a maroon. Mine on, on the picture there was a little more of a maroon. Hey, Cheryl, I'm going to say good night. I'm heading home from my grandkids. Oh, okay, Nance. I'm so glad to have you pop in, though. Yes, I'm going to start doing that now that I know how to. I would love it. I would love it. So we I'm going to watch the record. All right, I'm going to watch the recorded one. All right, bye bye. And I'll see you when bye -bye. I get home. Hopefully, we'll have to have coffee. Yes, definitely. Sounds good. <laughs> have a good night. You too. Um, you could get a deeper uh, maroon if you wanted in there. I love the. I, I can't find a maroon that I like, so I just usually take my Tuscan red. I was just doing it with the darker pink, but this one to show you, take a tiny touch of Tuscan red to your, uh, excuse me, black to your Tuscan red. If you really want a deeper shadow, you get a nice maroon. The nicest maroon I could I can find is just with the red and a little black. And it's just on the edge, I have a little shadow because the ears kind of turned over there. <coughs> And so I'm going to just get that shadow blended. And I might just, I could 
just throw a little lighter in the middle if I lose that lightness. It's a light pink, but I could certainly just take a little dab of white and get it lighter in the middle if I want to. And that's all you need. We're gonna bring the fur right up over that a little bit so it'll tone it down a bit. And this one over here, I again neglected to trace, but we'll just paint that in. So we'll paint that little instep in. The side will be darker, but let's just get that painted in. The little flowers, you could use any of the flowers we've done so far, any of the one stroke and whatnot. I made these just as dabs to look a little hollyhockish, a little um, lupin like, I guess. They don't always have to be fashioned after a particular flower, but I just like the look of those tall flowers for this guy. So I'm just getting that pink in. And I'm gonna put a little maroon around the edges to give it a little shadow. Just a little black to my test of red. Sometimes the quicker you can do it with the, again, the wet and wet, it's a little easier to blend. Just a little dark there, a little dark there. And then I would dry my brush up just to blend that. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> And then I like to pop a little white just right in. Because it's wet, it will turn pink. If it was dry, I would use a light pink. I wouldn't go straight in with white. But look at how nice it blends with, with what we have on the brush there. And that's, and again, by looking at the video is where I see that this needs to be a little more of a blend. OK. Let's get some fur on this one, and then we're going to go back and forth just lightening up. Same exact technique. I'm actually liking this brush. I usually use my liner, which is just a longer tip. This is, um, got a, it's, it's a little heavier right here, which holds a nice amount of paint. So this is working well. I didn't know if it would work very well without having my um, liner. So I'm going to start with the little strokes working lighter. So I can't go to white or very light brown yet, but I need to go a little lighter than what I use. So whatever color you based him in, you just can add a little white to. And again, you don't know if it's gonna really show until you put it on there. And if it doesn't show, it's the same color, just add more white. And I'm doing the same thing in the end of my ears. And I'm gonna just go from the outside, from the top to the bottom and to the outside edge in. I'll go over the dark. I don't wanna take the dark away. So if it looks like I'm starting to cover it too much, I will keep a very thin paint or just stay away from it altogether. And now since we have the pink in there, you can even bring some right in. I'm probably gonna go into a little burnt umber there because it's not really showing up over the pink. So if I go with the darker brown there, that'll show up a little better. Maybe a little darker brown here to start. And then I'll wipe my brush off and get back into that light. It's just the honey brown with a little white, just so it's slightly lighter than what we painted. It's not showing up a lot, but it will be nice to layer it. I'm trying to keep my hand where I'm so close out of the way. Let me put this at a little angle maybe. Maybe if I do do it upside down, you can probably see better. It's kind of hard and fast rule. I mean, I, I want to go in this direction, but if I have to pop on somewhere else and do some strokes, that's okay. But generally, you want, you can see how the hair kind of lays better when it's from outside in. And I'm always taking it right out over the edge of the ear so it's fuzzy looking, not that harsh line. And the same thing as the top of the head first. Right out over the other bits. 
And this is how you determine how fuzzy he's going to be is how many little strokes. And I think I went right down the nose this way. So right down the nose. Oh, that got a little too light all of a sudden. I'm working like dipping my paint into a little white and brown and mixing it on the palette as I go. So you can see it's a little lighter and a little darker. I don't really want it that light yet, but I do like it when it's a little different. I wouldn't mix up a big uh, puddle of paint and just use that same color. I like the natural way it looks when you get lights and darks. And we're going to throw some darks in here too. I know we're doing a lot of light right now. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in the brown bunny anyway, some darks too. And I'm just going to go right down to the tip of the nose, doing this same little stroke, just these little flowers. Our little pink nose is going to go there. So, and the face, we got the same thing. We've got the little chin would be start here. And he does look like a beard now, kind of the bearded bunny. And the same if I'm doing dogs or when we do the fox, it's going to be following the same kind of patterns. And he's already looking a little furry, so I, and he's not even, you know, we have a couple more layers to add. And I do keep peeking at the, the photo because I just myself even have to remember where what direction I went on this guy because I did go making this little what do you call those cheeks are out here but the little muzzle area I guess and this just kind of comes out this way I, I don't want to worry about the eye yet if I hit it with my paint that's okay and you know once you lay this first coat down you have the direction you don't have to keep thinking about it you're just going to go with that direction and yeah, I'm ready for you to do the eyes. There's zombies. The eyes are the best part. That makes come alive. And you know, when I do the pets, remember we do the eyes and mouth and nose first because it just gives the personality. But and this guy, I'm gonna have to cut it. And I, I did this on my sample too. I made this big bulging out eye, which really needs to be. It's it's gonna look like Marty Feldman too. That's like my bunny did this morning. <laughs> I just want to put that in, let it dry before we even get there, because that's going to be a little bit too puffy out. Well, that's the best part of my my dog painting was Bear's eyes. They yeah. turned out perfect. Well, that's what gives them, you know, their personality and what kind of room looks what they look like. Can you? Heard Kim and Mary, I don't know. Were you guys here when we, was it only last month we did pet portraits? Did you were you guys around for that? Oh, oh yeah, because I, I did two. Gail, you did. I didn't know about Mary and get and Cam. Oh, no, yeah. I did not. No, so me the, the videos way, looks, are there. Right? And you can kind of see how we do it. But if you wanted to send me a photo of a pet, I I make a tracer for you. So it's very detailed. You don't have to worry about drawing it. And I have an app which I put the, um, and I can share that information, but if you want, I can just put it through the app and get the photo for you. And it makes it pretty easy to paint. That's it not a sketch me out. app. Is that the sketch me app? No, it's called Pic Pixart. P-I-C. You guys, P-I-C-S-A-R-T. And there's oh, a I bunch of filters. That. There's so many filters, but I just use the geode filter. And okay. you can adjust on a slider how uh, how um, painterly you want it to look, and it's kind of and it pumps up the colors a little bit, which is kind of fun. It throws in some purples, and you could go with that or not. Um, but it really breaks it down and simplifies because there it's a lot when you're looking at the pets. It's a, it's a lot, you know, you get overwhelmed. And this sort of breaks it down. And if you watch the video, I'm doing each pet with everybody, but you'll get the gist of it. And if you have any questions, let me know. But if you want to send me a, usually what works best is a nice headshot straight on, but you know, we can work with what you have. So take a, if you have an inkling to try to paint a pet, that's um, a good video to look up. And if you just put paint, pet portraits or pet painting in, you'll find that pretty easy. 
how would we send it to you? Email it or? Yeah, email would be best. I'll see it easiest email. It's Cheryl at tinkerscart.com. But if you send me a message, I can probably even take it from the message too. Okay. So I'm going to go now, I'm going to use white, but I'm going to thin it down a little bit. And then I'll use the last strokes when I go to do a solid white without watering it down. And I'm going to just go right over. Now you've got the lay of the land. You've got your little map. Now you can just kind of look at this and just brighten it up a little bit. Sometimes this might even be enough, but I like to add just a few really brights afterwards. And I don't want this to be such a harsh edge on the pink, so I'm going to just bring some little strokes over that. I'm going to bring some up here. <laughs> and if it doesn't look bright enough, just add less water. But I want it to be just, again, a subtle light to dark. And doing the same thing over the whole little bunny. And again, like I said, you could do thicker strokes and go a little quicker. You could do thinner than this and do more. I'm going to kind of go in the middle of the road so that we don't, you know, you don't have to be here watching every little stroke. You get the idea. And I'm just following the shape. And right now, like I said, I don't even have to worry because I'm just kind of following what I already put down. I do add a couple drops of water whenever I reload my brush. I love the way the bright shows up over the little highlights we have and again remember to always step back and take a look at it and then over the next day and you might see some little things you want to address but it's hard to see it when we're this close we're working too close we get too critical no one's looking at your painting this close but you so try not to get it to, uh, to get too my, worked up and worry my best it. thing has been taking a picture of it and looking at the picture yeah, that really works yep or holding it up in a mirror that works too yeah i do the picture too Charlotte, it's amazing I right how that really, yep. right off the bat you see what's off yep only i should have looked at the picture i took a picture and then left after i did the murals and yeah. i put little cattails in there and i forgot to put the stem of the cattail oh, no. and both so I have to go back anyway, because there's some more stores that I'm going to do, but I, I text the, the shop owner. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and then I thought, well, maybe we could make it like a Easter egg hunt, like Ooh. have a kid decide what's missing and maybe she, they can win a oh, prize. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> and they'll find it in no time. Uh, I'm just taking straight, flat, uh, straight white now, not mixing it with any water. And just, can you see, I'm just putting some strokes here and there. Yeah, that looks good especially like on the ends where it would be brighter tip of the you know the face would be a little brighter perhaps maybe top of the cheek you just put it on wherever you want like i said we don't have to have them all look exactly like i'm just putting that in um where i want to and again like the front of the leg would be a little brighter but we're not going to really see it the front of this little haunch i could put a little bit in under here, I might go a little heavier, but it's <coughs> covered a lot. So mostly right up here. And I'm not going to go too far into that shadow. If you now have lost some of the shadow, that's okay. We can always wash it in afterwards. I might have even gone and done a little wash of like a gray blue after. I think I did around the ears. Although on this one, I like the bright pink on the ear. Uh, but you can always wash in shadows. So for instance, if I take that maroon I was using and just really get it very watery. I could just, just kind of wash in a little dark if I thought that I needed a little more. And then with just a clean brush, a, a brush with just a little water on it, I can sort of soften that. So it's more a little watercolor technique. It's almost showing you how we do wet and wet and a watercolor and a wash as well. So I would leave that bunny alone now. And I am going to go to this little guy uh, if you wanted to, I don't think it needs it, but if you wanted to and you had that, you know, the blue gray that you were started with, um, let me get a little more blue. And this we could do after, like I was saying about a wash, but if you wanted to put a few very light 
darker strokes, you could do that. I don't think it needs it. Uh -uh. Just it. That's cute. That's nice. And now you can build it up brighter white if you want as well. So here we've got one layer of very light fur. It's hardly, you know, even noticeable. So now we're just going to go with the same color, but add more white, which was just our honey brown. And we'll add some more white so it's a little brighter this time. Thinning it down because I want it to be a little, I want it to flow. As the paint sits out, you need to be adding water a little bit. And let's just do the same thing. And again, you can do it fairly quickly. I um, don't see that as much as I'd like. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more white so we can see it. And that's just a little bit better. And each layer, you don't have to do as much as the previous layer. You could just kind of hit it here and there. I'm gonna to try to get it over the ear a little bit. And again, this could be the last, you might step back and say, that's that's finished. I like the way that looks. Outside in. You could almost use an old raggedy brush. You could try it that way. You could try it with a fan brush. People use all sorts of things for this texture. I kind of like the hands-on of the little strokes themselves. And once you have it mapped out like this, it's really as quick as it just goes right away. I think upside down is easier for you guys to see, and I'm not using my hand to cover his face. And I'm going kind of this way with the shape of the face, but you know, nothing to say you can't do some little wiggly ones and have them have like a crazy hairdo too. I'm going to go in with some dark browns though mixed in too, because I don't want it to be too, too light. I want to have some depth to this guy. Turn it all around now. <clears throat> oh, and it's back. Um, I went into my Zoom settings, I thought, and really increased everything I could think of to make resolution good. So I don't know if that was the issue, but I'll go back and play around with it if, if this is not the best resolution. I've added a little more white on my brush this time, and you can really see it, but it almost is good for the camera so we can see. When we do this little mouth, it almost comes up a little so he's not looking so mean. They, Because of the way the eyebrows are, they look a little kind of, I don't know, I think they need a little, little smile under here when they, when they put those little lines in. He's got a very, very mustachey looking. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. We don't have to do too much at the very bottom because we're really not gonna see it. I'm kind of liking the texture I'm getting. I'm kind of going a little bit, uh, the texture of the canvas is kind of helping with the fur. I'll get a little more detail right up by the neck in the middle. Because we'll see that you know, between the flowers and the greenery. And I would go in now, let's go in with some of the darker. Let's go with the honey brown with a little burnt umber. Because this one we can do some more shading, some darker strokes. So I would do those where... <laughs> Shaded. I would go into here maybe and bring out some darker little strokes. Wherever it's a, sh a shadow, just a little bit. I think underneath here, I need the little muzzle to have a little dark. Sometimes I just go up over the 
And just because it, to me, all of this looks the same shade, I can go in with a, and, and the reason it's not uh, popping out too much in, in blending is because I'm using the honey brown and a little burnt umber. If I want straight burnt umber, it would look like really harsh lines. But can you see how these are very soft? And I can get darker if I want, but I just think it needs a little more than just what's on there. And like the light building up to white, you could always build up to a darker if you needed it. I don't think we need to go any darker. You know, we've got a few shade, shading um, bits here. You could go a little darker if you wanted to bring out the sh little bit of shadow. Dark in here. And it looks pretty harsh with that dark shadow. So I'm just going to, because of the camera, I'm going to just kind of go in now and make it look a little less like a big solid line here by just bringing back in some of that brown. And again, in person, it doesn't look that much that bad, but it just is looking a little bit like just a line. So I'm going to get some of that, even that lighter color back, I could go up. And I don't want to go straight white on this guy, but I'm getting very white here now. And I'm just going to go here and there with a few. If I see a section that looks just too all the same tone, I could just throw in a little something. You have to laugh at me, but he needs a top hat and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that and I would expect nothing less. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it when you do that and not try to have it look like exactly like mine. It's what makes everybody's different and and everyone puts their own spin. Oh girl, we ain't no danger of mine looking like <laughs> <laughs> I get crazy sometimes. And here it's just stop whenever you want. You can go really crazy and do all the little lines or you could just have it a little vaguer. <clears throat> I need to get them some little pink noses and the whites of their eyes I'm gonna put in now so that it dries so that we could paint it. Oh, they don't have whites, I'm sorry. They have um, burnt sienna and black. So it's just like a little half moon shape. I think I need to go to my smaller brush. I have more control. Yeah, I just think I burnt sienna for that red brown for a little half moon shape. <coughs> Black pupil, and that is a little drier. And I think I will shade in afterwards. I'm missing a little little bit of white showing there, but I'll leave it. And again, the same thing here. It's like a hat, it's just a little half moon shape. gets a little bit of a top eyelid afterwards. And this is a little see-through, so you can go into a second coat, but almost looks like it's a little highlight being put in there without even trying. So I might leave that. I like that look. It's a little bit lighter in the middle. Uh, put a little pink nose pull that gives me a second to dry. But simply adjust a little Upside down triangle. It's on the dark side, but that's all right. It gives me something to work with the highlight. This is just the half of the nose kind of seen. So it's more like this little triangle shape. Let it sit a minute and before I shade and highlight it. This little guy, you don't really see her mouth so much. It's more just a little line under. 
in those there, and it just kind of goes down here. This one is going to be a little bit seen from the front. So I'll pick a little black and the burnt umber. I don't want it to be solid black. I'm just doing a little a dark. And this one, it gets a little shading underneath the nostrils. So like that, a little line down. And I want to deepen it. So if I need to add a little more black. What the hell did it go? Just this little triangle there. And you can bring a little line down if you, if you think it needs it. Then I'm going to go into my black. I'm going to actually get a little fresh black out so that it makes a, if it's dried up and draggy, it's not going to make a nice circle. So I'm just going to paint in the pupil. So we're going to try better than this, but I'm going to try to get it in there like this. And they come alive when you put the little highlight in them. It's simple as a little white dot or a little comma. It makes all the world a difference. World of difference. I got to put them upside down because oh, it's certain angles I can only get from certain ways. That I grew a little bit. Let's see. And now I'm going to just thin my paint a little bit. And with that black, it's this tiniest little, I, I guess it would call it an eyelid. So it will just start, almost comes in like a little teardrop shape, little tear mm. duct there. That hurt. And then I'm just going to go across the top. I'm not going to go across the bottom. I don't want to outline. I'm just going across the top. Same with these guys. It's really just this little line that I'm going to go right out over the edge of the eye with. I did a little extra heavy just so you could see it on the camera. You could go a little lighter if you wanted. And I just like to go out over. And now I've got to just reshape the little burnt sienna bits because this one needs to come out a tiny bit. Round it out a little bit. And I'm going to round up that black again. So funny how just looking at the camera. So you are a little more paint. And you can come down a little bit round and round and round. We'll wait till the dry to put little white comma strokes. And then I do a little bit of a light blue little hash line. We'll let that go until that's dry. They don't look like psycho bunnies anymore. <laughs> little highlight of white on their noses. That's a little bright, but I will water that down a bit. And I'm just taking a dry brush now. Just It's very watery. I can kind of soften it so it's just not so bright. If we need too much of a shadow it's a tiny tiny little nose but if i took just a little of that maroon thinned it if you think it needs something else i could just almost go just on the edge with a little bit of a shadow and i kind of overshot that so whenever i do i just take a little clear little clean water on a brush and just soften if i need to and I did much for whiskers on them. When I do the whiskers on the bunny, I don't, I do them very light. And so for instance, if we wanted to put, I'd go to a very light, light brown, really thin down. I'm not going to do like just coming out. I sort of do them just kind of like a little crookedy like. And I almost like stop and start and skip a little bit. So it's not like a big solid line. I don't know if I did it on mine, but I'm going to just kind of do a little there. I see a place where I smudged a little burnt umber. I'll just cover it with the brown. I think I had a little bit of a shadow in her ear on this sample one. This one, you know, it's a little darker in there, but I don't know. I think it's fine. Now, this will make their eyes come alive. Just, and I do this with pretty strong white. It's just kind of like a little comma, a little comma, a little comma here. 
<laughs> it doesn't make a huge difference, does it? When you just put them in. And a bunny soul is born. And a little blue, just a, mix a little blue and white. And I want this pretty watery. Well, well, actually, pretty light even. Let's see. It's just going to be almost, I don't want it to be a pointy line. So on a flat brush, I mean, a round brush like this, I can spread it out and have like almost like a little wider square of that. I've picked up a good bit of black there, but um, let me reload that because I think these guys are dry. And if not, you at least get the idea. And I come back in the way. I get so impatient. It's like, just leave it till later. But no, I have to, you know, go right in and... So the front, it's just kind of like a little that sweat will wait. I will try to be patient and wait. Oh, it looks like I'm in the dark now here. Because this you can see. So I would probably finesse a little bit with all my little strokes, getting them just the way I want. Let's jump in and do the greenery because that's really kind of fun. And I just do some different shades of green. So let me get a clean Thanksgiving paper plate or a dry one anyway. And you can pick, pull out whatever greens you want. I like when I use the phthalo uh, green and the primary yellow, but use whatever colors you have. I'm gonna start with a darker green and go to like almost a lime green in places. I'll show you the techniques. It's sort of free handed on. You don't have to follow a pattern. You can just glance at it and, and kind of put them where you want. I made them kind of straight up. You could wiggle them, whatever you like. I'm taking out a little more of that phthalo blue because sometimes that makes a nice darker green for me or a tad of black if I need it. And I'll show you my palette, but it's really hard to see because of that um, silly Thanksgiving design. But at least I had Easter. I'm going to start my greenery with my flat brush because I love to get that nice thin chisel edge. <coughs> I did not put... You know, I could go in and do the same thing with the little whiskers on this. <clears throat> Water, getting a little dry now. Okay, I'm just gonna mix these colors together with my brush. It's just the phthalo green and some yellow. You can get a really nice emerald green, but right now I want it darker, so I'm going to go more green, a little blue, a little bit of tiny, 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 just a little tiny tad of black, but I'm keeping it thin. I really want to make some nice long strokes, sort of as a base. I can go heavier over them after and lighter and darker, but what I really want to do to start, and I need to go up just a little higher now so you can really see what we're doing there. So I'm taking the chisel brush, I've got a nice wet paint on there, and I'm just going to go and just sort of redo some right on top. I sort of had them kind of coming out so that you, you know, they're just kind of coming out like this way. They can cross over. They can even be a little darker than that, but the trick is keeping the paint really watery. Now, you could do this with your liner brush, too. I just don't have mine, and I just like using the, the heavier brush because I could go and, and even put little leaves in at the same time if I wanted. But for now, let's just get a little map in of the greenery. And like I said, they don't have to all be straight standing still. They could kind of crisscross. We want to make them a little natural. And if any of them are going to be a little thicker than others, I would do it back here because we can layer thin lines on top if this is something that you don't like. And I really did kind of put them right up over the bunnies. I had a few little things coming up behind them. Yeah. I think you backed away from the microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let's see. I'll try to lean in more. Okay, so I've got a lot of dark ones and I'm just gonna slowly get into some lighter shades. As many as you like. I might go in and get some really dark, just a few very dark, just to give the illusion of depth if we have you know, something really dark back there. 
And what's good about doing it with this flat brush is I can add a little more pressure and then get lighter if I want. You can almost see how watery that is. I have it coming right up in front of them there. And here I have it coming right up. And you can just fill in whatever you like there. And like I said, some could be round or heavy too. And I'm going to get lighter now. So I'm just going to clean my brush off. What the fuck is wrong with this hand? With that. Don't look like that And again, just like before, if you don't see a difference in the color, just add more yellow. And I will get more yellow so I can add more yellow. But you might have a, some colors already mixed in the bottle. I know I have the Citron, which is kind of nice, and some other shades. Use whatever you have in whatever shades of green you like. I'm going to do the same thing for a little bit, just layering on this, the greenery, and then I'll worry about going in for the flowers and the little bits and pieces, the little leaves and things. But so I'm just going. Why does that look like it's way back there? Okay, that looks freaky. Is it my camera or something? It kind of. I do like the crisscrossing. And here is where you can go in with any shade you like that you have. My greens go through about a half a dozen different changes. Which is great. I'm going to add white to this same color I'm using now. White will get, make it a little more opaque. And I'll be throwing purple in there. Yeah. I love doing that with different colors that kind of almost are unexpected. You can certainly do that. And again, I like to have a little thin and thick so that it makes it a little bit more. It's looking like seaweed almost. If I was doing my under the sea paintings, it would be kind of cool. You can almost go do some. Actually, I go very yellow, almost really apple green, very yellow, some of them. And, you know, I think I'm a little thin down the bottom. I think I'm going to go in and I have it a little heavier, almost, um, I have it down here. It's almost a little bit heavier green. So I'm just going to kind of slip slap or pitter patter that little shade in so it's, a, it's not just looking like an ocean. It's got a little greenery there too. Just need a little bit of a base. Yeah. It just kind of grounds all those little greens. All right, so I like to make, and I don't have my little square flat, but you can use, oh, I have one that's like this. It's a long handle, but it gives you the idea. I like to make different shaped little leaves, and sometimes I just go by the, the width of the little flat brush I'm using. So I'll do some with this, and then I'll do some maybe with just a flat brush, and I can even step back to with, just use any of the shades that you've mixed up thinning it down because of course the paint is a little wet and now like I did these little guys if you just have your paint thin enough and just use that square brush just to press and pull so I'm gonna have to let y'all go I got somebody at my door all right yeah well great to see you and you can finish up with the video and we'll see you around in the in the uh group I'm sure okay hon bye night. Gail have a great night bye, -bye. bye. 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 So you can kind of see how I'm doing those little strokes. It's just press and pull. They're just very vague, but it gives you a nice little. I really am, oops, I really am better with it upside down, um, pulling it towards me sometimes. So sometimes I just do maybe like three little rattles, uh, leaves. Remember, they're not even attached to anything there. They don't have to always be attached to something. This is just kind of background stuff. Something for the flowers to sit on. I would do some in all of the shades that we had. And sometimes I'll get darker. And when we did these little the greenery bits, you could just kind of put some in there. It's kind of a fun, loose little way to paint the greenery, which you can probably incorporate into other paintings as well. And 
And I will just get lighter now, getting into those other shades. They don't show up as much, but I like that they're subtle. And then on top of the darker greens, you can just add some. And then adding white to get them even lighter. All right, that looks fucked up. My stomach's not lined up. That's freaky. Okay, maybe a little bit more of the yellow over there. And then with the white, you get a whole other little shade. And that really pops when you get them brighter. Yeah. Which we'll do at the end, too. And with the flowers, we can really get them brighter. And on top of, say you've got this little guy who's a little darker, you can get some white there. So that's a nice base to put some flowers on. And all I do with those is start dark again, go to light. And they're a couple of different shapes. Some of them... Let me get like a like a little bit of a dark pink. Some of them I used uh, my little flat brush. I, I'm going to turn this into a flat brush by just pressing it down. And I'm going to get my flower colors. So I've done a variety. I did pinks, purples, a little orange. You pick out whatever colors that you like. And I'm going to have some yellow ones. Yellow is so transparent that I'm going to start a little bit with that deep ochre. And then use some yellow and white on top because because it just is hard to get it to cover. So there's a couple different shapes. One little flower I sort of did, and I'm not gonna even worry so much about picking a particular stem to put them out on, but they were almost like these little bell shapes. And once we give them a little highlight in the shadow, they look like little tubes like, so they fall kind of like this. I'm really just pressing the brush if I start it and then press down, it looks like almost like a little upside down tulip shape. Now, I could do a whole little flower like that, but sometimes there's just a little bit peeking out somewhere. So some places you could just add a few. Some places you could do it just like I did there. So with each color, just kind of put it around and we'll just go from color to color. You don't, you don't have to uh, stop and do each color individually, but put the pinks or whatever your color palette that you choose. So that's some of the pink. And that that dark purple. So I'll get these colors out so I have them ready. I've got the yellow, the ochre out for that. I used the dark purple. I did a dark blue, which we have. Uh, let's get a little dark blue out. And a little orange, which I don't have it too bright. I started, I think, kind of with a burnt orange and then went brighter. So let's get all the darks in, then we'll highlight them. Some of these little flowers I just did as little kind of blobs. I know that just little blobby shapes. These, I start a little bigger on the bottom and then get them a little smaller as they go up. They're really not, um, not too detailed. They're gonna have a little highlight and we'll just get that little, I kind of have them more of a little curved shape. I got a little puzzle on my bunny there. Actually, I don't mind that in there. So two different shapes, little uh, tall flowers here. These ones that are a little roundish, more like hollyhock looking, I guess. And then these others that are more like a little bell shape. And I tend to go just like I said, a little smaller as it goes up on those guys. And start up and have a smaller and then just get a bigger. And again, like I said, just sometimes it could just be a few little peeking out from somewhere that, you know, if you have a bouquet of flowers, you don't, everything's not just on one level. You see things peeking through. Uh, let's put in some orange. Orange ones I seem to have done in this painting more like the little bells. Through. I look down a little bit into the grasses um, sometimes, but not a lot, mostly up here with those flowers. And you can actually just use the little picture as a guide too. I, I'm kind of going off 
just where I want to place them, which you can do. I'm just putting my darks on to start. Like I said, I have some dark blue ones. I'll just do a little bit of a, I'd like to say a little bit more, I think, than that. When I'm using those tubed acrylics, I don't have my liquids here. I just thin it with a little water. And these guys I did as these little hollyhockish looking ones. So I get a little bigger as I go down. And I've been sort of going straight up, but remember we can do some that are sort of curved to the side. They don't have to all be straight up and down now that I'm looking there. So my flowers on this one are gonna look a little different places, but just all the darks first. The last one we have is the yellows, but we're gonna do it in this yellow ochre color. Those I almost did as just little smaller fillers, like almost like little dots. They get a slightly bigger, but they're just little, almost just random little dabs. You could pop in some white ones if you wanted. I might've put a few little petals here and there. Looks like I have some dark maroon ones with some red on there too. So we'll do a little red. What I'm doing is just kind of wherever there's not something, I'm just kind of putting these in. I'm going right over the green stems. I'm going over leaves that we've made. We can pop more leaves in afterwards. And in a little bit of custom red and black to get that maroon. And then we'll pop some brighter red on top of it. So. And these were just kind of like really smaller bits, just. So you can see I really formed the little bell ones with more of a brush stroke. These I'm just sort of dabbing on randomly. Hello, Miss. Hey. Come tell Cheryl. Hey. That's what hey, Cheryl. Oh, hey, Willow. How are you tonight? Ben. Good night. Good night. Good how do you like our bunny so far? I like it. Oh, good. All right. All right. Give me that kiss. So the one mm -hmm. shaped like little bells, I just put a little dark Love you. mark. So say they're like a little bell. I just do a little dot almost at the bottom just to make it look like that's the little bell part. And we'll give it a lighter highlight. But for now, anything that's that shape, we'll just get a darker shade of what the flower is. And just a little... I don't know what those plants are called. I'm terrible with plants. I know there's a name for them. But... No, I know. You could just do a little painting of just these little flowers. Okay, so we have an orange ones. I did like that as well. We'll just take the orange and mix it with maybe even a little black, just something that's a little darker. Some of that maroon actually. And same thing, just a little dark. Just a little dot towards the bottom. And then we are going to brighten them up. I know they look a little dull, but we will give them a little bright highlight too. Yeah, that was a good sky for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it plays off the other colors nicely. So what are the ones little bells are? Um, that's good. Okay, so for these squishy little purple ones, 
Um, I'm just going to use the dark purple mixed with white if you had a different shade you want to use, but I'm just going to simply take the purple and white and mix it. And I'm almost just going to kind of dab on top as if I'm making sort of random little petal shapes, leaving that dark purple in the center. I almost like doing it if the purple's a little wet and it drags into the color, that's okay. Very random. I might put a little darker bit in the center if I need to. While you have that lighter purple, if you want to, as just like foliage, you could just make some little dots here and there in the background, especially on this dark green. It just looks like something peeking out. And again, it's just, it is making the petals a little bigger than we formed them at first, but that's all right. I'm going to dip into a little white to brighten this up while that color is still wet, if I can do them fast enough. And if not, you could just do a few at a time, too, before they dry. Very rough. I'm not really concentrating on it too much. That just dragged a little blue in, but I don't even care because it's kind of nice to have some different shades. And now, while that's still a little wet, if I go right into my white and just here and there, just a little bit, especially nice if it mixes in with the purple that's already there. They're very abstract, but when you stand back, they, I better look and see. They seem like they act like they read as flowers. Now those have a dark and a middle and a light shade. The little guys that were like little bells, I give them a little highlight. So it almost could almost be white maybe if it's thinned down and they just get a little line. I want it thin, I don't want it to be too, it could almost be if it's the orange, maybe we'll just go a very light orange. Just a little highlight on them. They almost look like little olives. You could paint olives that way too. <laughs> and the same for any of the other colors. The pink ones, I would maybe go with this super light pink. <clears throat> <coughs> almost a white, but the white seemed a little arched. <coughs> so see, I'm just giving them a little line. Let me hold it up a little closer so you can see it. You see up close, it's, it's a little rough, but when you stand back, it's it all reads right. I'm tending to make these little white highlights or light highlights on the left side of that little flower. So I'll continue to do the same. If you want a real brighter flower, you could have done two coats of those first colors we used if you, did, if you want to like the background to not really show through. I think when you put the highlight on, it kind of makes them pop though. And we have this little orange you want to miss, but we don't have to pretend. Oh. So basically, this flower, like we did with the purple, we'll do the same thing with these uh, yellowy ones. And since yellow is, again, so transparent, I'm going to add a little white to it. And I'm just leaving that little center as, um, as, a, yeah, as a deep ochre color is kind of still in the center. And you can see kind of how. Oh, yeah, I like that. that little highlight. And sometimes if I take the yellow and mix it with the white and not blend it too much, you get that little look as if it's a little yellow. Sometimes it's a little more white. And I'm just basically making little pat, little. Uh, strokes that are a little fresher, a little lighter, just almost dabbing, just going around the center. I'm not making a perfect circle around each. I'm just kind of going around, not worrying about it too much. Sometimes I might go a little lighter with the white. See how that makes those ones look a little bit closer to you. Okay, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect color to do those with. I know, mm -hmm. but the yellows are hard. So, and actually the deco art um, cadmium, I like the primary and the liquid text because for mixing purposes, this cadmium already has some white and it. it doesn't seem like a pure yellow. But for something like this, it works because it's going to give us a little better coverage. <coughs> <clears throat> And I always think I have them all done and I need to go back and touch them up. Again, every time you've got something on your brush, you can dab it in different spots, just as if it's like little bits of flowers peeking in. It's just adding to the layers, especially on the dark areas, you get a little light there. Not thinking about where I'm putting them too much because then it might look too contrived. You can just kind of dab them. And the red and the blue are sort of like those. Actually, the blue was very dabby. So I just took the blue, mixed it with the white, but not, you know, I just have blue and white on my brush and just dabbed it. So I'm not even leaving a center on these. I'm just dabbing on top and right into the white while I'm doing that. If I need some little highlights, I don't mind when it mixes with the blue and I'm going to dab it on, but it's going to really pop when I put a little of the white. So there's white and blue on my brush. As I dab along, the white highlight's gone, but I would rather take the white now while that's a little wet and just kind of squish it on there. My really technical terms tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I've got a middle shade of blue on there. We're gonna dab it. We're not worrying about little centers this time, but we can just keep picking up some fresh white as we go, because that really brings it forward. Looks like spring. I know, I'm so excited. I will miss down here all my tulips and all those spring flowers. Although I'll have them in Maine when I get up there, maybe the end. But I just love the daffodils and the crocuses. I mean, I have some little daffodils that have been trying to come up through the last two snowstorms. Yeah, yeah. And so I have tracks, yeah. With the white really can be dabbed in places too. Although it looks kind of like, this is a little trick. If you were doing, I, I, I know you might have even heard me say this before, but if you're doing a lot of foliage and it gets way too heavy because you, like I tend to overwork, or if you're doing trees, the same thing, they get way too heavy, go back with the sky color and dab it here and there. And it kind of gives you a little sky hole. So all of a sudden it lightens right up. So if you found that you're too heavy anywhere, these little, while you're using the blue anyway, you can just lighten up some little foliage areas if you went too heavy. And again, we can just dab some of that here and there. Same thing with the little red. I just have that really dark maroon. Red's another tough one, but let's see how it covers. If it if it needs to, we can add a little orange in there. And I think it does need a little brighter orange, just to brighten it up a little bit. The red by itself is just a little dull. Um, you can't really, yeah, you can't really even see it. So I'm going to go a little red, my Tuscan red, but in some of the... Um, jack-o'-lantern or any bright orange you have. And I'm dabbing it on. And, and some of these, you know, have a real dark and the brights really come forward. They don't have to all be that uh, um, that light. Some could be just a little bit lighter. Like the reds are not going to be as brilliant and jumping out as the ones with the really big white highlights. It's nice because those might be set back a little more. So I'm just trying to find a, some color, orangey red, just to pop on top of those dark maroon bits, just to break them up a little bit. And uh, it's kind of a nice, I almost got a nice salmon-y color with the red and that orange. And I kind of like it. And so I will dab, dab it in places. As you're doing this sort of dabbing of, of a color, you could always take a white and just go while it's wet right on top of it. Um, as much as a little as you need of that. I think I might have gone and taken just some white strokes. So for instance, on some things, you could just put some little white petals, like just peeking through, just like little dabs. If you have anything that's heavy, it needs to lighten up. I think I might have even on some of my purple gotten more like little white highlights here and there, some just to make it look like a little petal. I'm looking at my uh, 
original there and some of them and you'll have that picture to go by so you can make some i think i did some that were more like they really they started out really thin and then they kind of weave their way into different shapes like kind of that sort of a curved look this gives you an idea of how to make all these little guys and you can go as many or as little as you want i go back in maybe and add some leaves because i know i've painted over some and if you see it's just too busy and I don't see any leaves, you can go right in and leave. Of course, can even go right over your flowers a little bit because it's, again, layered. So go back and add as many or as few little leaves if you want. I'm going to kind of leave it at that because I'm going to let you do your thing. But if you've got a lot of little straight lines and you want to just get a little something, something, you could do some little leaves. Like that's a little bit too much by itself. You could go back in at any place and just, you know, do a couple of shorter little things like that. I think I like to put a little bit of something behind him with leaves. You can do dark light. Now it's, you just put it on there and see how you like it. I must have done a, a, a leaf right over his ear, so I'm going to correct that. And what I'll do for that is there's a couple ways. If you've got a mistake like that, if it's wet, I usually take a clean paintbrush and I scoop it out. Sometimes if it's not quite dry, I can still do that. And it. And sometimes I take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and, and if I, something's in the wrong place, I can get it off with that. Best bet on this is just to paint over it with the colors we used. So I'm just gonna go back onto that palette that had the browns. He could have a little dragonfly there. <laughs> Oh, you know what? That we did that little um, adding elements to your paintings last month, and this is ideal. Some butterflies would be great. Um, dragonflies, ladybugs, bees, all of them even could be used. It would make a really mm -hmm. cute little scene. And now just step back, look at it. You might say, "Oh, it's really kind of dark right here," and then you could just take, you know, a light, a light leaf or stem or piece of grass you could just you could see how the layering kind of is nice if you just start with the background and then you get some back right in the front again but that's all you know looking at your own painting and what you need this could be very well the way it goes you could go back now and say oh you know what the, the strokes on the bunny kind of faded a little bit and you just go back and you can add a few lights any way you want. I find that sometimes my highlights, I sort of lose them after, afterwards. And then you can just kind of go back in a few places. And, you know, get some light strokes. But I think that is basically it. What do you guys think? Any Looks questions? great. Yeah, it looks very pretty. I love it. Very you know, cute. This be fun to do, just like I said, if you have a little tiny canvas and just did a little series of the of the flowers. I think my flowers look a little dull. I think I would put two coats on of my, my colors sometimes, like say the orange. It, it's more um, it's more burnt orange. I would like, or, or even if you just go like this and just add a little brightness. I just want, I would just like to see them a little brighter. But I still, uh, I like the way it looks. Oh, the, so the little bit of uh, blue that we kind of waited on, it's just very light blue and it's just a little square stroke on the opposite side of, of the, uh, it looks white there, but just the light blue there. And I would almost tend to go a little more watery, but that way it shows you where it goes. Well, that's really cute. Mm -hmm. I did put little, I did make sure, I liked the little, I don't do the bottom thing, but I just did, did bring it down to like a little teardrop shape there on the inside. Very cute. It's a little rough, I know, but uh, I, can't, I go a little faster, I think, when I'm doing the class. Oh, and welcome spring. So I would just freehand that on, but our pencil or chalk it, but I think if you want that same writing, just Use your graphite once it's good and dry. And white graphite is great too. I have the Sorel brand in it. It's the one that I like the best. It lasts literally forever. Um, and the more you use it, the nicer it gets. So you could even use the white transfer of paper. If it's on this shape, it's almost like you don't need it. But if it was on the tall shape and you have an empty space, you might want to. 
when I'm doing that writing, I take and thin my paint down a lot. You know, I really want it to flow nicely for me and I don't want to be dragging. So I would use a, a, I wouldn't use a liner so much. I would use my detail brush. I would thin the paint down and because then you can get a few, <clears throat> you know, quite a few strokes, but that paint's really watery. <coughs> the top on the welcome is it wasn't, it was a little curly cute on the W, but the others, I most just did straight lines. And then in the spring, I did a little more curly cue, but it's kind of just a little practice. Keep your paint thin, practice on something else, practice on your palette paper or something if you want. Um, but, the, but the consistency of the paint really makes, is key because if it's thick, you're gonna, if it's thick paint, you're gonna naturally wanna press harder. So then the stroke gets wider and it gets a little frayed. But if you have it super thin, even if it's too thin, even if it's like you can't see it, it's a good practice. I mean, you could always go over it, you know? So just a little practice with a really thin, thin paint and uh, paint markers too. If you feel uncomfortable, you can always go with your paint markers well for that. The pasta has a paint marker now that is actually a brush tip, which is kind of cool. I don't have my markers. That's really cute. Yeah. Uh -huh. So any, any Thank other you. questions? Or at all, guys? No, that looks great. Can't and wait you to know try you it. You should always ask questions later or when you're watching the replay to just send me a message or something. Sounds good. I'm so glad to see, see you guys here tonight. And I'll have the recording is already done for the golden hour, that little villa scene. So wow. that'll come on, I think, next week. And mm -hmm. I did it in two parts again because it just I got interrupted. I think that my in, my computer died or something, so I broke it up. But something like that that's a little more detailed. You know, you, know, you kind of want to take it in little chunks. You don't want to have to sit down and, and do everything. It can always be done in bits and pieces and things too. Did you see my uh, my tulips, my yellow tulips that I did in that modeling paste? Well, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, for I didn't see tulips. them painted. Did you put them just with the modeling paste? But maybe I haven't seen them at all because I've been off the computer a little bit with all my shopping. To uh, let me see if you've got them there. I'll see. I'll take a look. I'd love to see them. Okay, where do I need to show them? Do you right there? Here you go. Oh, how bright they hey. are! I love them. The Was that the, the first when you did with the modeling paste? Do what now? Have you done others with the modeling paste before? I forget. Yeah, uh, this one, I added my color to the modeling paste. Oh, okay, that was what was different. And what? how'd you yeah. find that? I haven't done that before. What do you think? I kind of like it. Um, it's like sculpting it's, more, it's right? It's still a learning process, you know? Um, but it's interesting. I want to get to, I want to get better at it. And like my watercolors, you know, I like doing that. Uh, I need a little more help on technique, you know. Yeah, I, I'm now that I've got to, you know, I'm going to get a little more settled, and I've given up the other business. I can have time to actually we we'll dig into watercolors a little more. Pretty. I love that little one. Oh, pretty. Oh, I, I'm thinking about doing a card out of that. Oh, you should which, definitely. Which thing up? Love it, Charlotte. Very nice. Yeah, oh, <clears throat> I'm the rogue. <laughs> bless, you, bless your heart. I know you don't ever know what's going to come out of my mouth or out of my paintbrush. Oh, that's what makes it interesting and fun. I'll work on my lighting because this is pretty poor when it gets to be dark. So anyway, I think it will be fine. And the lighting this morning was beautiful. On the... Oh, I know when it's daylight, it's great. I just don't know how daytime. We're always, um, Cam and Mary, I'm always polling people to see what's the best <laughs> times for you to do lives. Um, we did a Saturday morning once because we had to reschedule something. If you have any input at all about what's good for you guys, I would love to hear it because most people show up. In, I mean, most people do the recording, but for those few of us that are usually here on the lives, I'd like to cater to what's good for everyone and if well i'm retired so i prefer the daytime as opposed I, to the evening but i would like to do some daytime ones because i think a lot of uh, a lot of the members are in, in that same 
you know, they're all sort of available during the day. So why don't my we husband that? already <laughs> came looking how much longer are you going to be? <laughs> I know. And I, and I sort of chit chat a little bit too. But, He's uh, okay. <laughs> we're going to have our snack. <laughs> oh, good. I think I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, yeah. So any, uh, out of who's here tonight, out of you guys, is there a daytime that's better than others for you? I'm retired as well. So you know, in the day, no, anytime. I, I okay. work it whenever you're available too. Great. Charlotte, yeah. is there a day of the week that's better for you if we did a daytime? Uh, weekdays, you know, but weekdays, that, that's, that's for sure. That'll change here shortly when all of them are here every oh, that's day. That's right. Yeah. When do they get summer. out of school? Uh, about late May, I think. Okay. I think it's. We'll, put, we'll make the first one next month in a day on a weekday and that way you'll get that one in yeah y'all save my sanity till they get out <laughs> i love it and, i love it cheryl I'm, I'm going to ireland next month so i hear from you you've been there a lot of, are you oh that's traveling? right i did yeah Often. um where are you going oh ladies i'm gonna say good night talk okay, to you good night. thank okay, you, thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you thank you time. so much you're uh, welcome bye. thanks for joining in flying into dublin and going to uh Galway and Dingle and oh. are you doing a tour? No, we're we're going ourselves. We're running the car. My husband and I and my my brother and his wife and we're doing it ourselves. Oh, that's fabulous. My family is in Galway. That's where my favorite city because I just know it like the back of my hand. I started going over when I was a kid with my grandmother in the summer. And going to Dublin would have been what I did for my business and I got to really love it because I learned the city and I could walk everywhere. So I do yeah. love it. It's a it's a city and it's could be any international city, but it's vibrant and it's wonderful. But Galway is where my heart is. The little cobblestone uh, stone key street and just like I said, I could go to a cafe and run into a cousin and uh, that's what I love. And Dingle is amazing. Yeah, we're um, staying in Dingle, so I'm excited about that because I hear it's really yeah. nice. Like I said, I'm, I haven't been since before COVID and I usually went every, I was there every year for Halloween usually and then January for the trade show. I rarely go in the summer back when I was a kid, I did. And it's fabulous because it's light out until 11 o'clock at night. Wow. But there's a more tempered climate. So when I go in January, people are always like, oh, how are you going in January? Well, it's warmer, you know, warmer and, and more mild than New England. That's and right. You will even see palm trees there because palm trees are not native, but the tempered climate, you will see palm trees, which is so cool. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And what, what did you say? What month are we going again? May. Next month, May. Oh, six. cool. All right. So I, I would love to have a report back. Take lots of pictures. You're going to see all the baby sheep will be everywhere. Um, it'll be so cool. You'll love it. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm we're. You know, I've never been there, so I'm you know so excited. So I can't wait. Now that you're retired, it's easy to get up and go anytime. Yeah, and you told me where you're. Where you are? You in Michigan? Did you say? Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Well, I know for me in Boston, and now out of Orlando, for me in Boston, and you from the East Coast too, it's so easy of a flight. Like when I went on the tours, and I took tour people on tours and different things have people flying in from all over the country or New Canada, they're flying for a day before they get to where we go in at seven o'clock at night and are there, you know, in six hours or something. Yeah, that's what it is. It's easy. The money is super easy to handle. The language is the same. And the people out of anywhere I've ever traveled, the people are so thrilled that you're there. They will go out of their way and do anything for you. It's a, such a cool experience. I've sent people that aren't even Irish descent and they, every single one has come back. I, I would book people on CIE tours and they would always come back and they would just be raving. And I can't even, I can't even think of a bad experience to be honest. Oh, you got to make a trip. You have to go back then. I'm ready. Yeah. I, there's a, my husband and my brother have a little thing in the works for the summer because I think it's for the Notre Dame game or something. I'm, I'm letting them handle that, but fall i like to go in the fall but yeah i have never set foot out of the continental u.s <laughs> yes yes i'd love to go uh to ireland and i have a lot of scottish background mm. you know so I'd, beautiful it, it varies uh with dna's 
upcoming, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, and strongly Irish and Scottish, you know, it's uh, pretty much my heritage. We used to say, uh, we used to believe there was a Native American, but it does not show up in the DNA. But they don't have all the DNA yet. Whenever yeah, you have to picture me with dark hair, because I grew up with brown hair, uh, dark brown, almost black, and I have high cheekbones and a little uh, cheek eyes, and uh, I I used to get tan really really easy. You know, I was about brown as peanut all the time, and so I got mistaken for Native American. Mm -hmm. uh Japanese you know because I had that super dark hair yeah and and it's really Irish and uh Scottish I told Daniel I said you know I'm I'm a little dark for Irish you look more Irish than no, I depending do like that, but up in the north when you know the uh Spaniards came in and whatnot this was a lot of um you know, it's not the typical, the, and I'm not naturally red anyway, but red hair, black hair is more popular than red hair, really. Really? I look at pictures. I'm half Irish, hey, he half said, Italian. Mom, you've heard about the black Irish, you know? <laughs> yep. Well, it's funny because my brother, half of us look really Italian, some of uh, the rest of us look Irish, and my brother with the dark eyes and the dark hair, I always thought, oh my God, he's the Italian side. Well, when I look at an old, old picture I have now of my grandmother and her siblings in front of the cottage, the, the, the uncle that I went to stay with when I was a kid was Pete and the picture of them all so young my brother Kevin is a spitting image of of Peter Noon so it's funny it, it's the darker look but that you can see where it came from yeah that's amazing yeah but no I, I'd love to go see those places I've never been anywhere I've been too busy taking care of other people and oh, now no, it's your turn now yeah that's right it's time you go Right, Mary? That's right. Somebody throw me in their suitcase. <laughs> so, uh, Social Security disability does not take you very far. Oh, um, no. That's that, true. That's, that is true. Well, ladies, I've along. had a great time. Yes. I love your house. I did, too. And I will talk to you all soon. And like you said, you know where to find me. All, all right. right. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Thank you.